I'll, uh, I'll restart here. So thanks, uh, Deepak, for this opportunity. And um, just before I get into my uh, presentation, I wanted to thank all the speakers that have gone ahead of me. I've, I have, you know, I don't even know you're sleeping. You must be sleep deprived now, Deepak. You've been doing this for a few hours. Um, I don't know how you do it. Maybe there's more than one of you, um, but uh, just incredible speakers. I really um, appreciate it this time. And I know that everybody's giving freely. I'm going to take a bit of a different approach. Um, I'm going to be talking about marketing and ag, but really I want to talk about women in agriculture. Um, and I can do this from a lens of marketing, but I'm going to take a bit of a different um, path here. And, you know, my presentation was really, I hope inspires companies to consider more women in these roles. Um, we have a, a severe lack of uh, a women in leadership. And uh, so I'm going to touch on that as I go through um, my story. So to start, as Deepak mentioned, I am a co-founder at WS, which is a marketing uh, practice. Uh, we work with agricultural clients across North America. Um, you could call me a bit of a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've launched uh, quite a few companies. And uh, Deepak mentioned um, our latest is actually an AI company in animal health. Um, but also co-founder in True Media, of Oak Research, and um, a globally recognized not-for-profit, a bit of a passion play uh, for, for better care in cats. So this growth mindset and entrepreneurial spirit has been uh, the fuel that's helped us embrace a digital-first, customer-centric approach. Um, and we've been able to attract talent right across uh, North America. Uh, because of this approach. Um, we've, we're really strong in culture and we believe that that is our, our greatest strength is when we're all working to the same uh, purpose. Um, and I do think that that ties in closely with uh, women leadership. So if I may, I'm going to just share my screen. You don't need to see that. And I'm going to present here. I'm not as fluid as Jeanette. So you should see an old-timey picture uh, on your screen. Let me know if you don't. Um, but basically, we're going to start here. We're going to start at the beginning. Uh, so uh, I live in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, and uh, we work right across North America. But, you know, I started, and I, and I think our origin stories are so important when we talk about women in agriculture um, because we've had to work to get here. Um, but my story is... Uh, this is how my great-grandfather would have farmed at the turn of the century in the 1900s in Western Canada. Um, you know, this is not my family, and I'm not quite sure what they're doing with, um, I don't know if they're going on a date or what is happening here, but um, as you can see, it was a very, very intensive uh, type of agriculture in the 1800s. Uh, back then, my family sold Clydesdale's horses, uh, so you couldn't survive in Western Canada. We have massive land here uh, without good horses to power your farming. In fact, a lot of the crops were actually created to feed the horses that helped harvest the crops. So, you know, we talk about sustainability. Um, you couldn't survive, right? And so it was a good living for the family to um, make money helping other farmers and their livelihood. Uh, a real turning ha happening when tractors were introduced around World War I. And I would say that this was the biggest revolutionary change in agriculture around the globe was when tractors and uh, technology was introduced. Uh, and so guess what? When you're selling Clydesdales as the power, uh, all of a sudden the market dropped out. And so they had to really have a pivot discussion in terms of what they were going to do. And of course, they didn't use those words. Um, but they decided instead of fighting technology and resisting the tra tractor, they decided to embrace them and take to market something different. Um, you know, during the pandemic, right, we've seen this massive shift to yes, where in the past we were really resistant, more resistant to change. You know, this is a, an old adage of, of humans, right? So being open to change is really, really important. And that's really what I want to get across here is we need to keep changing and um, you know, what better place than egg? Uh, when my family started to do this, they had to um, raise, uh, they decided to raise purebred cattle and they had to really shift what mattered to them. They had to understand their customers. They had to understand a new supply system. They had to build, rebuild an infrastructure and retrain their labor. And so what that taught me is to always stay ahead of the change. And it's 
probably why I was so attracted to marketing because I didn't want to get fooled. And guess what? I get fooled every day. <laughs> Nobody's immune uh, to what's happening there. So, you know, this was just an important lesson that I've carried through. And I think it really fuels my entrepreneurial uh, spirit. I ask a lot of why questions. Um, to challenge uh, thinking. And you know, what better way to do this than through agriculture? You know, when I uh, was picking my, I have an undergrad actually, a science degree in agriculture. And then as I got into the workforce, uh, I really started to gravitate to marketing because I could see how influential marketing is. Um, a lot of things that we do in agriculture, we tend to think of marketing as a function of accounting. Uh, um, it's just something that you need to have and let the product sell itself. But as we see more entry, and Jeanette did a great job talking about carbon, um, that emotional context is just as relevant to farmers as it is to anybody else. So marketing for me really, really helped put my passion of agriculture and marketing together. Um, and so we have clients today that, um, you know, range from UPL, which Deepak should, uh, you know, head offices in Mumbai, uh, Anuvia fertilizer, we'll talk about them a little bit in terms of um, late growth stage uh, ag tech. Uh, federated co-ops and retail, uh, Verge Ag, which is software as a service, um, Vive, which is a nanotechnology, Alberta beef producers, Mealshare, um, outstanding young farmers, uh, distilleries and breweries. You really go from primary ag all the way to um, table. Uh, and all of those stops have helped influence our systems. And I'm not going to jump into like our, uh, you know, how we do marketing. Um, I'm happy to have that chat. And I actually, um, the, you'll see me on chat if you want to talk further. We do have a very digital first system, uh, but that's just in keeping with, um, you know, the technology that's available today. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I want to jump into the category of agriculture. Wow, how exciting. This is such an incredible time to be in agriculture. And I think you've heard that over the past uh, speakers as well. Um, it's just so, so exciting. I was just on a call this morning with a, a multinational talking about rebranding because those silos are being broke down at a record pace. And women, there's no better, no better part of the population to help break this down. We're used to it, you guys. We've, we've been trying to break that ceiling for a while now. Um, and so what better, what better place for us than to do this in um, agriculture? The purposeful, purposefulness of agriculture is so profound. It touches every facet of uh, everything that, that, that people and that planet need. Um, so I know you guys are all believers because you're here, but um, it's really, really profound. And we have to stay ahead of it. Um, this is the largest industry on the globe. Um, but yet we have this huge um, gender gap. And I, uh, I didn't get to see everybody's presentation, so I know that this thread has been picked up a little bit. To be honest, I'm much more comfortable talking about what my, my company does than talking about women in ag. But I feel like this is the proper platform to have a, have a point of view on this. Um, in Canada, similar to the U.S., um, you know, 72% of ag businesses don't have a woman, woman on the board. And I think what's really, really important to, to, to think about is we represent, women represent 51% of the population. So McKinsey actually uh, put together um, uh, an economical study on GDP effects if we do not move to gender parity. So it is absolutely crucial that we see more women. And as you know, like the women that have been speaking, obviously we're very mindful of this, but we can't do this alone and we can't drive this agenda forward without the help of men um, that want to help support this. But, you know, we have to move here if we're going to feed a glowing pop, uh, growing population. We don't really have a choice. We need more women uh, involved in a lot more of the decision making. So what's holding us back? Why, why do we have this problem? Um, and why in agriculture? Um, and I mean, as a woman in agriculture, you guys can all, you know, for those of you that are on the same side of the table that I am, or, you know, um, you know, um, diversity or minority, um, does it kind of feel pointless sometimes? Um, 
this is, I just thought it was a really nice visualization of the zero sum thinking that we really, really see epidemically in agriculture. So that zero sum approach, right, is thinking about winner take all. You know, in order, in order for women to get ahead, men might get behind, right? That's a zero sum thinking approach. It's the perception that one person's gain would be another person's loss. Uh, poker is a zero sum game. Uh, in order for someone to win, there needs to be someone else losing. Think of every sports analogy that you can think of, right? Um, and so we call this the tyranny uh, of zero-sum thinking in agriculture, or I call it, um, because working towards better outcomes creates a bigger pie. So this idea of coopetition, we see it in distilleries a lot, we see it in uh, food service, um, is relatively new in agriculture. Uh, in agriculture, we very much had a siloed approach, uh, patriarchal, uh, conservative, um, with power held by a few very powerful companies. And you know, you can you can name as well as I a lot of them that have held that space and have been very um, territorial in holding that space, right? So you know, they buy the competition and it's winner take all, um, and that has been the norm in agriculture for a long time, you know, and. We're seeing some shift now because of what's happening and the imperative, especially around uh, technology and also these issues that we have with climate and such that we just heard about from Jeanette. Um, and there's nothing to apologize for this, but there's just no better time for women now to come and be a part of this. And even though the bulk of our audience of farmers is still male, those dynamics are also quickly shifting. So we know about a third of the population in farming, in primary farming is uh, female. More importantly, this shift to this younger audience is also driving a change. And that younger generation is gonna be more tech savvy, but they're also gonna be looking at uh, some of the softer bits where before, you know, when you think about that, the, the slide that I showed, you know, with the horse um, cultivating a small track of land, that was all about just keeping the lights on on the farm. Now we're trying to think about how do we keep the lights on, but also, um, grow a, a healthy planet or uh, you know stop some of the issues that we have in uh, climate change. So these things really align well with how women with how women work because we tend to you know I'm generalizing and I think all of us have had experiences early in our career where we've had to make a decision do you become part of the system or do you path out on your own way and um, you know, early in my career, actually, I had someone pull me aside and said, you know, you're going to do great, but you got to get away thicker skin. Um, and you have to do what your boss tells you need to do and go with the flow. And I thought, you know, do I give up my, um, you know, my personal identity, which I don't fundamentally believe it's my way the highway or that patriarchal approach. I actually think we get better work out of, out of collaboration. Um, do I give that up to actually grow my career? And it actually is what helped spin me out into my own business because I just couldn't, I couldn't get traction with that. Um, and I saw a lot of women actually capitulate to be successful in that older system. So um, the times that are changing, and I mean, this is a testament, even having this, um, this platform is a testament to that. So we're re really well aligned uh, psychologically uh, to think about the opposite of zero sum. So win-win and collaboration. Um, this coopetition that I mentioned, this is an incredible shift in attitude. It's almost like sitting on the opposite side of the table. And, you know, when we are based in fear and um, uh, control, we'll tend to go back to zero sum. But when we're thinking um, in terms of openness and try and diversity and inclusion, uh, we can go faster. It feels better, but actually you get a lot more innovation um, on this side of the table and that's what we're seeing a lot in ag tech even you know we think about design thinking and agile marketing um, really honing in on those levers is is creating better outcomes so you know we really hold it deal uh, a deer at ws it's like rocket fuel for successful companies today and we've heard it you know like i think pam um, with her own bio, you know, talked about don't hire jerks. <laughs> um, you know, this collaborative approach is, you know, everybody has an opinion, right? Um, and yeah, is it as efficient as just some one person making a decision? Uh, maybe not always, but uh, long term, it's going to be much better, um, much better journey into success. So uh, we we need this in design thinking. It requires collaboration 
collaboration. Um, you know, something to think about here is that uh, Harvard Business Review, and I mean, again, I know I'm speaking to conversion here, but I think it's really important, you guys, we take credit for this and we keep carrying this forward. We shouldn't be talking about why women, we should be talking about why not women on a board or in leadership positions. So we know Harvard Business Review just did a, another, yet another survey in 2019. And um, out of 19 um, leadership uh, attributes, women rated higher. So take initiative, resilience, uh, practices self-development, drives for results, disp uh, displays high integrity and honesty, develops others, builds relationships, champions change, establishes stretch goals, collaboration and teamwork. We all ranked higher now not significantly higher but enough to say listen you know what's holding us back is we are having this balance you know do we have family or not but in terms of what we have to offer you know take any bit of women input that, that you can um, because it's only going to make your company stronger so the other thing I want to just kind of double down on here um, from my point of view is you know talent has no gender um, so you know, over the course of my career, I haven't, I haven't tried to lead with, you know, obviously I, I, I um, am female, but I do not lead with that. Um, but I do think that I've actually used it as a lever sometimes um, in ways that um, held me back in terms of it was good enough. You know, I was happy to go to part-time because I was having kids on maternity. And now we're all talking about work from home and that transition after COVID back to the office. And, you know, that's a construct. Full-time in the office is a construct of 1950s workplace. Why are we even talking about that, right? So this is about that presenteeism. There's so many things that we have to unshackle that um, having a different perspective is something that women um, can offer. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, get into um, a couple videos and I, I'm, I apologize if it's a little bit staggered I know we've probably got viewership from um, different parts of the globe I hope it works okay but you know a, a real tip that I have for anybody is finding your people um, and there's more people that are like-minded than ever which is really really exciting um, embrace diversity and collaboration um, you know all kinds of diversity and collaboration it was interesting in our own company um, you know the majority of our audience is still uh, farmers right and they're older uh, white male farmers in North America and um, we had a quite a candid conversation about what it means for us to drive diversity and inclusion and you know our mandate was we're gonna do it we're gonna do it because it's the right thing Thing to do if we in turn end up with clients that aren't comfortable then they're not a good fit for us because this is our path forward and this is what we want to live by um, and I think we do have to take those stands if we're going to really drive this forward so I'm going to uh, start a little video here that um, I hope you guys can all um, watch here and see I just hope it runs smooth for you this is um, a client you know, I didn't talk a lot about our work, but I think uh, this is a good demonstration of, a, we call them case stories, of a client um, that we really believe in that is uh, targeted at uh, growers between 18 and 39 years of age. And it really speaks to their passion, but also to WS's passion for doing things a little bit differently. Their numbers are growing representing billions of dollars and counting to our economy and driving real change in our food systems. Yet, marketers still aren't speaking to them in a way that works. Who are they? They're Canada's outstanding young farmers. Innovative, smart, highly skilled, data-driven, revolutionary. So, why is the industry talking to these guys? Too many are still assuming all farmers are the same. Want your audience to actually listen? Find out what drives them, why they make decisions, why they're outstanding. Canada's Outstanding Young Farmers Program partnered with us to take the conversation right to these young rebels with an edgy Banksy-inspired campaign, a call to farms, real people with different values, motivations, and interests, unique qualities revealed through behavioral data. We aren't just talking to farmers. These people are outstanding. When we partnered with WS, they looked at this from a different angle. They understood who we were trying to speak to. 
and execute it in a way that resonates with our audience. Together, we served up a new landing page designed to help drive nominations along with impactful digital ads served up to young farmers online and a virtual event highlighting a future shaped by the very people we are talking to. Let's grow the future of agriculture. Let's grow something together. So, uh, really proud of, there, you know, if you ever want uh, inspiration, talk to a farmer, you know, it's uh, phenomenal, the, the market that we get to be in. Um, I also want to share with you, this is the, my final, uh, well, final couple slides here, but I also want to share with you sort of their numbers. Their numbers. Sorry about that. Uh, this is um, Anuvia, Plant Nutrients is one of our clients. Um, Jeanette talked about carbon sequestration. This is one of those sustainable fertilizers. So it's, uh, if you haven't heard of the media, they're based in Florida. Um, they take uh, waste, food waste, uh, and they pellet it um, into um, high nitrogen uh, fertilizer. Uh, you can do more with less, uh, very, very high yield impact um, and circular economy. So incredibly green. And uh, we've helped them with their branding from day one. One, and you know, that is a sweet spot for us is commercialization uh, to late growth, late growth stage startups. Uh, Anubia just closed their $100 million seed series uh, round, uh, and we're going to be doing some amazing things. Um, and we, we've helped them commercialize right across the US and now into Canada. And um, stay tuned because it's going to get more exciting for Anubia. But this is just a bit of a case study on some of their work. As part of their commitment to a circular economy, Anubia Plant Nutrients makes products from reclaimed organic matter. The process provides immediate and long-term soil benefits and gives Simtrix fertilizer a unique dark appearance. Anubia was expanding into new markets, looking to increase demand for Simtrix in the lucrative Southern States Cooperative. Research uncovered some key insights. Most growers thought most fertilizers were essentially the same, and they generally believed sustainability was the enemy of profitability. With that in mind, our goal was to be as different as possible and push the message that they can have it all with Simtrix. In partnership with an award-winning animation team, we brought the Simtrix granules to life as the stars of a dark futuristic landscape, contrasting the sunny images of typical fertilizer ads. The animation used icons to deliver a message of balance, profitability, and sustainability with a confident, understated style. The high-res video images were used across an integrated media strategy for a consistent look. All campaign elements pointed to a custom landing page connected to a live dashboard, allowing us to monitor audience response and adjust tactics in real time. The campaign received over 15.7 million impressions and exceeded the lead generation goal by almost 24%. With an 86% increase in traffic to Anubia's Where to Buy page, the campaign uncovered priceless data on how and when growers consume media and what messages effectively turn interest into action. With a unique message and visual style, the future of fertilizer puts Simtrix in its own dimension. Harvesting smarter data for a bigger audience today and tomorrow. So this was a, uh, Anubia was interesting, right? Because uh, understanding the market, uh, we know that the investors cared about the carbon and carbon sequestration, but growers are really worried about keeping their doors open and having a little bit of margin success. And so we actually led with ROI and you saw that in the imagery. And now we're just shifting, um, we're shifting the campaign now as, as uh, trends change. Um, but really interesting take on, um, you know, what uh, uh, our markets are doing and how fast this is shifting. So that's, you know, that's kind of where we hang out, but it's all about change. Um, and Deepak, that's that's the end of my slides. Um, I really appreciate the time, and I don't know if we have time for questions or or uh, if you want to leave it at that. I'm good with that too. This was and with after such a beautiful presentation, I cannot let you go without asking a question. So let let me honor off uh, asking you a question. Uh, you've talked about motivating uh, women in agriculture. 
and marketing is such a powerful tool right to achieve whatever you want to right uh, it's marketing which has made us eat cereals for so long right so i i i would uh, like you know uh, request you if you can guide those uh, young uh, entrepreneurs who want to make uh, their career in agriculture but through marketing what would be your advice for them who get a mentor okay actually two things get a mentor and work for somebody else so marketing is moving so fast um and you might have great ideas but but take your time to do your due diligence have some bad experiences um you know what what worked for me really well was actually working in a patriarchal system um and then understanding you know if that hit my value system or not and then that alignment coming out really helped me attract clients that are like minded so this is why we play so well well in egg tech right but but when you're just starting or in your in your younger phase you really don't know right and you've got all this messaging like follow your passion and you know what have really crappy jobs too right like i worked in the field and you know you you got to have the whole experience right before because this is not okay marketing none of this is easy not one person's story is easy here there's no instant wins so you have to think about what gets you up in the morning and what inspires you but i'd really recommend for women and having a mentor um we want to help and it, it's absolutely imperative and it doesn't have to be a female um but you know it can be a, a male as well but if i didn't have people that didn't open doors for me i wouldn't be here and i think that's probably true of every person on the planet so you can't do it alone you can't do it alone so if 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 you are in canada or us please apply to susan work for her for a few years i'm pretty sure you'll become an awesome marketer <laughs> Thanks I'd thanks like thanks a lot. <laughs> so thanks thanks a lot it was pleasure to hear insightful presentation from you thanks a lot